Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be doing a podcast on the sciences and foundation for wellness, my playlist. I'm calling it Four Breathing Tips for High Stress Moments. As always, when I do these type of podcasts, I will put the link into the description. The link is for a big thing site, and a lot of times there are audio options so you can actually listen to people who know how to pronounce the words hmm. i fuck them up but i enjoy doing it gives me a chance to reread an article that i was interested in and i'll talk a little bit about certain things and this one caught my eye it's titled four breathing techniques to get you through high stress moments you're always in control of your breath by derek barris as I said, it's on the Big Think website. A lot of these tips are anecdotal in a sense. There aren't um, links to abstracts and certain testing. However, in, in moments and in times like this, especially, people look for different types of tools. So one of the tools I use is in here, one of the breathing techniques, which I, and I, there's a lot of them out there and they're all valid in their own way. Some are just not as developed or looked at as a, as a peer review type thing. So take everything with a grain of salt, might not work for you, might seem odd, but I think, especially now, this is good to give people a little bit of uh, information and perhaps some tools on how to deal with shit in life. And this is for everybody, young, old. So I implore you to take a listen. I'll, every now and then I might stop. Of course, I'll fuck up a word or two. That, that's what you get. But I'll probably go through it and then, you know, give a little bit of my thoughts on it. So the, the talking points on this article are, Anxiety is triggered environmentally and emotionally, but a psychological response quickly follows. Calming breathing techniques to help tamp down the psychological response of anxiety. The following four exercises are known to help calm anxiety and develop focus. And that's been a real strong point in what I want to do on parts of my channel. If you look at my foundations for wellness, I talk about an easy breathing technique, coupled with a little bit of a meditation, somewhat of a cognitive behavior therapy, and make it simple enough to give someone a tool that they can play with and it'll help them. And I believe it helps at least a little bit for everybody. That would be my claim. Now, I'll go through them and I'll read the article. There are lots of videos and links in this. There are a little bit of uh, techniques they show you, so it's really an interesting site to check out. And I'll start with, I believe the first one is alternate nostril breathing. Emma Cipala, science director at Stanford Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education, says American culture values intensity, yet undervalues calmness. We never shut off. While intensity has its place, every animal in nature inherently knows the necessity of rest in order to store up energy for when it's actually needed. Americans are careless with our energy reserves, which is why so many of us are chronically tired, overworked, and stressed out. We got that right. Zapala knows that breathing changes our state of mind. She recommends a popular yog yogic breathing technique, Nadi Shodahana, also known as alternate nostril breathing. Place the index and middle fingers of your right hand on your forehead. Use your thumb to close your right nostril while inhaling through the left nostril. Then close the left nostril with your ring finger and exhale through your right nostril. Repeat this for at least two minutes, then sit quietly for another minute or two breathing normal. There are many variations of this technique. My favorite is the four cycle breath. Inhale for a count of four through one nostril. Retain your breath for a count of four. Exhale for four. Hold your breath out for four. If you're new to this breathing technique, retention might initially create more anxiety than it relieves. 
So try the basic inhale exhale pattern until you can at least you can last for at least five minutes before moving on to breath retention. So yeah, these are things that your body might key up on that you're in a in a stressful situation, even though you're not. You can experiment with these things and having a little bit of foreknowledge will help. Power breath. Now this is the one I use most of the time when I do my meditations uh, or the, the beginnings of it. Uh, I do a couple different ones for different things, but for the most part, this is one of my favorites. Everyday use. I'll be. I'll continue. Game designer and author, super better Jane McCognigal, recommends the power breath. Exhale for twice as long as you inhale. She says this will shift your nervous system from sympathetic to parasympathetic tone. You'll calm down. Simply sit comfortably, close your eyes, and begin by inhaling for a count of four and exhaling for a count of eight. This is also a popular yoga breathing technique. As with Nandi Shuhana, Shuhana, <laughs> it can initially kick up rather than diminish anxiety. If you find long inhales challenging, begin by inhaling and exhaling at an even rate, a count of four in both directions. Then try to slowly increase your exhale to a count of five, six, and so on. Long-time practitioners can inhale for a count of four and exhale for a count of 50. As with any muscle, you can train your breathing. The benefits are immense. Now, in my podcast, in this particular area, I recommend breathing in through your nose slowly, three to five seconds, exhaling through your mouth, five to eight seconds. And I try to always say that if you have breathing problems, just keep that method. This also says you can do equal in both directions. And you start and then you slowly increase your exhale. And this is my favorite one. I wouldn't even say you have to do it sitting down and comfortably. I recommend doing it before you enter the phone, before you get in your car, before you get into traffic, before you open the door to work, before you greet your pets in the morning. The more you train your body with this power breath, the more it becomes an instinct, something you don't have to think about. All right, I'll continue. And then, like I said, there are videos, and you can check them out. Focus word breathing. Lolly, a mind-body specialist at the University of Maryland Heart Center, offers what she calls focus word breathing. Traditionally, this is known as mantra meditation. Choose a word that has meaning to you, calm, grace, ease, and repeat it during every inhalation and exhalation. As your mind wanders, the word becomes a sort of flagpole that you've mentally planted to bring you back to this moment. As a former sufferer of anxiety disorder, I remember how important my thoughts were when having a panic attack. The power of the psychological symptoms increased when I dwelled on negative thoughts. The spiral felt like being sucked into a vortex. By contrast, when I was able to redirect my thinking, the symptoms lessened. Mantra meditation never completely worked during an attack by that point. My physiolog physiology had been hijacked. But as a regular practice, this breathing technique is powerful. Think of it as training for the big game of your life. You teach yourself to focus on the beneficial words. Your attention goes where thinking leads you but you also have control of your thoughts. By integrating a mantra with breathing, you're priming your mind to focus at will. Very important. I think all these have some merit and some practice and some experimentation. But you won't go wrong, in my opinion. Deep belly breathing. This exercise is commonly used by yoga instructors to bring their students into corpse pose. Savasana. Place your hands over your stomach while lying down and focus your attention there. Take deep, even breaths into your hands. As with the last technique, focus your mind there. Relax the muscles at your extremities, your toes, your fingers, and forehead. Allow yourself to melt into the floor. Uh, she can do, I love doing this breath while in Viparita Karini. 
otherwise known as legs up the wall posture. <laughs> the video above explains how to enter this pose. A blanket or pillow under your back makes the posture comfortable. Once there, I practice deep belly breathing. This technique always calms me down. I recommended it to friends suffering from insomnia. They all respond with positive anecdotal feedback. All right. To me, articles like this are really intriguing. At some point, I will try a little bit of everything, see how well it works for me. And, you know, I'm a little older now, so I'm more set in my ways. Although I do practice and try things. A friend of mine showed me a Joe Rogan podcast and he had, um, damn, I forgot the name. And um, they were doing breathing techniques and getting you to be able to hold your breath for longer. And I think Joe Rogan was doing it with him. And it was pretty amazing. So it might take time, but eventually I'll try some of these techniques and see how they would fit into what I need them for me. Now, if I have problems uh, sleeping, I would try the last one. Um, uh, deep belly breathing. But for the most part, I focus on the power breath. It's a part of my instincts now, or heuristics, and the way where I don't have to think about it to help me. Sometimes when there's surprise, when there's um, things that are unexpected, I find myself in a breath, already treating the symptoms that are going to come later. And it's a struggle. Some people it's easy. Some people it's hard. I mean, so many people grasp it and then don't need more than like one, uh, one lesson or one interaction. It's the act of thinking about thinking and clearing your mind and some people take forever they get frustrated so i understand it but my my argument would be even failure frustration is like reps at a gym you're, you're doing something you're making pathways you're creating better ways of thinking and it might be minor it might be little here and there and I think it could help. You could combine the deep breath exercise, follow it up by um, ma uh, the, doing the mantra, which is something you can actually focus on with the word breathing. It could help you in certain ways. You could develop and experiment for yourself on how to find a way to stay rooted, to be in balance. I look at it more as in the power breath, you're looking for something to ingrain in your body. But when you combine it, when you do have time to sit down comfortably, and you can close your eyes, and you're comfortable, whatever, you can try to focus on the power breath to let everything go, enter the void, so to speak. And it'll last a fraction of a second, and when it breaks and thoughts come in and feelings, those are your reps. And the more you practice these things, the more you can get a control of everything the more you could teach yourself to recognize your body preparing to be angry, sad, happy. You could have a lot more control over what will be the tipping point. As this says, tamp down on things. And that's how it could begin. And some people could get this type of method, experiment. They don't go back to the doctor. Some it never works. It becomes a frustrating thing. Some people even have issues, and there are chemical imbalances in the brain. There are other disorders that might uh, conflict with it. So it's always good to be knowledgeable and understanding. You don't want to avoid uh, professional help. But when you're looking at it from my point of view, I see a foundation of wellness is important on changing society, changing the world. I would rather have kids learning about power breaths and thoughts and feelings before they enter the realms of schooling and college where it's oh, they're already they're already influenced by too many things and it's not things we can't control are like genetics and um well we can't right now but eventually you might but it's the environment, the way we learned is not exactly what kids might need. And I think you can look at certain aspects of 
education and where it's being um, done exceedingly well and how their society looks at things and how they view things. I think you're going to need an awakening in this area. Kids should be able to breathe and focus and understand their minds and emotions at the pace that the brain develops. That's understood. I mean, the cognitive development of a toddler to a teenager is vast. But understanding those uh, changes, having an idea of what age range these changes are happening... So at first, the kids are learning more from touch and your eye movements. You know, when do they start understanding how to use their breath and how to breathe? And when can they start clearing their mind and understanding that they can step back and analyze things? And the more you practice it, it becomes instinctive. And that's my recommendation. I love articles like this. I say this a lot when I read these things, but it's also therapy for me. Um, I'll read this once or twice, I'll flag it, I'll bookmark it, I'll throw it in a notepad thing that I have. Sometimes I'll elaborate on it if I'm going to write a little script with it. And anytime I can get my hands on things like this, you never know. I might think the yoga posture doesn't work for me, it's silly, I, I just can't do it. And someone might say that's the best thing for them. So I would not only look at this and take a gander and see if anything works, but look into the realm of breathing exercises, of meditation, of certain ways of calming yourself and getting ahead of these things. It's not impossible. However, there are always outliners and for certain people, you can it might, you know, some people just need medication. Some people need a professional therapist. It's just important to be introspective, to ask yourself the tough questions, to be honest with yourself. And thinking about thinking, breathing, is so important. I really implore people to try to get a grip on these type of things, even if it's just a cursory glance. Sometimes just thinking about these things creates proper pathways. You'd be surprised. So, I wish everybody the best of health, a wonderful holiday season, be well, and my best to you and yours.